Hey comic book junkies, it's the Frog Queen here and today I am going to do something a little bit different that I started doing um, a little while ago and wanted to continue but didn't get the opportunity to because, you know, I was sick and then I was building a new computer and blah 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 excuses. Um, basically, I wanted to start doing maybe once a week or once in a while this um, comic book nostalgia. Comics from, you know, Older comics, <laughs> stuff that's not new and not coming out now, stuff that's been around for decades. Um, and today I thought I would talk about The Drifting Classroom, which is a manga series from 1974 by Kazuo Umezu, someone that I really love and appreciate and tons of other horror manga enthusiasts love and appreciate. Um, and so, yes, I wanted to talk about this series, which means so much to me. It has inspired so many different uh, amazing uh, artists from all over the world, but a huge generation of manga artists, uh, including one of my favorite people, Jinji Ito. But we will um, just dive right in and I'll tell you a bit about this story in particular, and then in the future I'd like to talk to you about some of his other stories. Unfortunately, not a whole lot is available in English, um, published in English. Uh, Viz Media has been putting some stuff out over the years, but hopefully we'll get more. So our main character is a sixth grader named Sho, and he's going to have a pretty awful day at school. Essentially, he gets to school and there's some sort of earthquake, and suddenly the entire school shifts into some wasteland, which you immediately wonder, is this the future? Is it a whole new dimension? And guess what? There are giant insects, and they eat kids. Like, what more could you even want from a manga from 1974? So what is actually the most terrifying part about this story is not the monsters or the dimensional shift, but actually the reaction of the adults, uh, which unfortunately would likely be incredibly accurate, um, as it's the entire school that has shifted into an alternate reality or future, because you don't know in the beginning where the school has been transported, uh, the teachers are all there too. And when food gets scarce and tension runs high, uh, some of the adults get desperate. And while well, since children are basically defenseless, they just start doing some messed up shit like beating the children. <laughs> Adults uh, beating children in media um, and stories and television, it's shocking. Uh, it's not something you generally see in movies or anything mainstream. And it's like people think that adults don't hurt kids. Um, like newsflash, it happens all the time. Uh, there's the child trafficking, that's a big part of the world. It's horrible, but it's a big part of the world uh, where children are being abused by adults. And th that's why we have like these protective services and things that are pretty useless from what I've seen, but you know, they're there. Um, speaking of betrayals of children being hurt by adults in, in television and stuff, um, I was thinking about the backlash Fallout 2 received for allowing players to kill kids uh, and in the games released since it was so taboo and just so shocking they've actually taken that ability away and you know you can't there's no perk anymore for murdering children on the wasteland <laughs> like there used to be um, but yeah it's just it, so it's a very shocking thing to see in a story um, but I think it's very important and it's what what makes the drifting classroom feel very very real because I think that really would happen I think the the adults um, would definitely start hurting the children killing them off uh, eliminating them so that they didn't consume uh, food it's survival of the fittest after after all and uh, children are you know assumably less fit. Looking at Kazuo's work, you're probably going to be like, uh, if you're a manga enthusiast like myself, you're gonna probably be like, see some similarities uh, to early manga like Osama Tezuka. For those of you who aren't familiar with the name, uh, Tezuka is the most prolific manga creator in Japan known as the grandfather, or that godfather, of manga, and he's most well known in North America for bringing us Astro Boy. Um, but like how some of his manga looks inspired by Tezuka, Kazuo went on to influence a whole generation of horror manga artists and my personal favorite, Shinji Ito. So thank you so much for tuning in. This is my first video on the work of Kazuo Mezu and my third video in the series called Comic Book Nostalgia. Uh, please check out my previous video on the Mobius epic The World of Adina, recently released in its entirety by Dark Horse. And please give this video a thumbs up. 
and leave a comment because I love interacting with you guys. And until next time, read something good.